Pardon me, but do you have any Grey Poupon, old chum? Hey, welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another DC Multiverse video. And today, we're going to be checking out all the brand new toys for the upcoming Batman, the Flash movie by McFarlane Toys. So this will be all the vehicles and all the figures. There's going to be an exclusive thrown in there as well. One thing I want to point out, maybe kind of confusing on the old shelves when you're looking at these single figures. We have Batman, 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 Dark Flash, The Flash, The Flash, and Supergirl. And I'm just going to say, McFarlane Toys, in the future, maybe we can kind of divvy up those names a little bit better and call them something else other than just Batman and Flash. I mean, Dark Flash and Supergirl, they certainly have it easy. But speaking of The Flash, we have a brand new Barry Allen. For this movie, a nice candy apple red. On the flip side, you got a nice uh, piece of art, at least for the movie. And here's the barcode as well. These are all starting to hit store shelves now. Keeping with the Flash theme, we have another Flash. This time utilizing the Batman 89 costume to make the Flash suit, which will be really interesting. Now, keep in mind, I have not yet seen the movie. For those of you that watch this after the movie comes out, just rest assured, this was all prior, so I don't know anything. But then we have Batfleck, Ben Affleck as Batman, kind of, sort of. We'll talk about that. And here's some weird artwork on the back. It's a weird leg. And here's the barcode for Ben Affleck Batman as well and his Bat Cycle. Now, this one you can use with any different figure, but specifically from the movie... It's going to be Ben Affleck's Snyderverse, that sort of deal. Here's the barcode for that as well. And for those of you interested, yeah, these do make for a nice little package right here. You got Batman, this specific Batman, and the Bat Cycle. Moving on, we have Supergirl, which should be Kara zor by the trailer. She didn't even said her name. You got some artwork on the back. And here's the barcode for her as well. Then we have... Some people saying, oh, it's a big movie spoiler. I don't know what this spoils because I don't really even know what I'm looking at here. But we have Dark Flash. <laughs> Whatever that turns out to be. It's the barcode for him. But this one is pretty cool. And actually, out of the box, I liked it a whole heck of a lot better. This is a Target Store exclusive gold label. That means you can only get this particular figure at Target. And, of course, it's unmasked Michael Keaton as Batman. So here's the barcode for that. He's also started to hit Target store shelves as well. But the main one, the one that I really wanted, the one that everyone else is probably going to want as well, Batman, Batman 89, Michael Keaton Batman, right? From the Flash movie. So it's a little bit different looking, but it's, it's Batman, right? It's the one everybody wants. But every good Batman needs a good Batmobile. And, yeah, we got a ginormous box I'm not even joking you here's a little figure for scale right there but yeah this thing is immense it does take up a lot of room so definitely keep that in mind but it definitely brings back all those kenner nostalgic feels i'll tell you that with some added problems here and there but we'll get to that in just a second because we have a lot of figures to look at so sit back relax grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee this is a look at all of the new batman i mean the flash from the Flashpoint movie by McFarlane Toys. And while I got all you Flashpoints here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my DC Multiverse videos. Now, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Look at all the Batmans and Flashes there. I think there's a Supergirl in there somewhere. But here's everything out of the packaging. And for the most part... Every single figure at least comes with some sort of accessory, minus a Dark Flash, which maybe some power or something like that sure would have been nice. But we'll kick it off with Barry Allen here. Now, he does come with a number of different attachable Speed Force effects. If I'm not mistaken, we've definitely seen these before. They all kind of look the same, different colors, yada yada. So it's kind of the same dealio. But the Flash himself... Being that it's kind of weird now, you know, with the whole Ezra Miller thing, I'll just go off of, it's a nice looking figure. We'll just say that, right? You got the nice candy apple. You got that really cool design element of the suit. Very Jim Lee lines. You know what I mean? Overall, as much as I'll say, 
I never really care for superhero costumes in the movies these days. Very few, although that Blue Beetle movie looks awesome. Very close to the source material. They very much captured what you see in the film as far as the trailers are showing. And that, for the most part, is Ezra Miller in the face. And you get a lot of head rotation. You got some butterfly joints. You got the arms. So you could get him going in all the running poses that you need. Double jointed elbows, bicep swivel, the whole enchilada. There's really nothing new here. In terms of the articulation, except for some really warped hands out of the packaging, I really think they need to stop posing them in the packaging because it kind of upsets some of the rubberized parts of the figures, right? To the point where it's kind of hard to put them back into the proper position. But the legs, the knees, you get the whole boot thing. It's all the modern updated articulation McFarlane has been using, so that's good right there. And like I said, he looks good when you want to pose him out into all the running poses that's known for the Flash. Just careful of his broken fingers right there, right? I'm going to have to heat those up. But for the sake of the video, you got to show exactly what comes out of the packaging. But overall, nice ab crunch, good head articulation. Overall, the articulation is solid, nice paint. So not a bad looking Flash figure. And then next up, we're going to be taking a look at, oh, Ben Affleck, right? Ben Affleck as Batman. He comes with a pair of open hands. This is for the motorcycle, primarily, because he doesn't come with anything else. And as much as I've been calling this Ben Affleck Batman, I think we can all agree, either they didn't have the rights, or they didn't capture it, right? I'm going to go with the first one, though. And that's not Ben Affleck. Although, for me, that's really not a bad thing, because I'm not a big fan of the Snyderverse, we'll just say. Ben Affleck is Bruce Wayne, totally cool, but yeah, I get what I mean. He's got the cape cloth cape which is awesome he's got the arms that go all the way out the sculpt on this thing very tactile batman and it really works now it's not always my favorite when looking at batmans i like the more classic comic book look through and through but the number of sculpted details they've been able to achieve here is pretty dang stellar i will give it to them all day and it's a really well done figure overall Minus the likeness for Ben Affleck, because that is definitely not there. All the tactile gear really works with you, from the shoulder pads to the neck to the head. He can look all the way up, so he can be brooding and look down, or he can go up and he's shooting a bat grapnel, whatever you want to say. But that also aids when he's driving the whole bat pod bat cycle around. Bicep swivel, butterfly joints, double jointed elbows, the whole nine yards. Again, nothing really crazy in terms of anything new in the articulation. But everything really does move a whole heck of a lot better. Plus, he has thigh swivel, which I know a lot of people have been wanting. They always give that to the specific characters that are having a, a bat cycle, really. That's all that uh, they've done so far. So every Batman that comes with a particular bat cycle, which, what are we on, the fifth, sixth bat cycle at this point? So, yes, it works. The articulation works. Helps him get him on the bat cycle, which is really nice. The cloth cape is stellar. It's heavy enough. It drapes nicely. It's pretty cool. I definitely dig it. It's not my favorite look for Batman, but for those of you out there, yes, you'll probably really like this Batman along with this said Bat Cycle. So this is from the new Flash movie. If the trailers are indeed showing us what we're seeing in the film, right? Of course, you have to take everything to the grain of salt until you actually see the film. But again, it's a very nicely done, nicely sculpted bat cycle i'll give it to him all day it's really well done it is great in the looks don't get me wrong it's a little bit light dare i say a little bit cheapy right when you pick it up you know what i mean you get the idea but the way it looks the way it displays on your shelf that's really all you need what it does how it feels that's an afterthought when you have something that looks this good on your shelf. It's nicely weathered. It's nicely painted. It's got the big wheels, the treads. Ben Affleck, Batfleck goes on the bat bike. So it all looks good. It all works as intended. Yes, I would like things to pop out. Maybe have some machine guns. Something to really add to it. Maybe some noise, right? A sound chip. Something like that would have added a little bit extra oomph. But if you just want the standard Batman that rolls around on a bat cycle with a cloth cape, well, yeah, then McFarlane definitely nailed it. See, that? he just drives away and he's got to stop some crime in Gotham. Nothing much going on the underside. Big, chunky wheels. Everything rolls. Solid A-OK -okay 
for the set. And then moving on, let's get away from the Batmans and the Flashes for a second. Let's check out some Supergirls. And Supergirl comes with a pair of extra fists. That's her only accessory. So she has flying hands and fisted hands. Supergirl herself. I'm going to say, again, it's not my ideal look for Supergirl, right? For what McFarlane has been able to capture in terms of the movie... I think the suit looks okay for the most part, although they run into problems with the colors of the suit. They go from a really light red to a darker red for the shoulders, which is the paint's problem, not the costume, right? It's just not painted to match the different parts and pieces. The big cape with all the cool cloth capes going around for this set of figures... I think she would have looked better with a cloth cape, to be honest with you. This cape, no joke, feels like it weighs more than the figure. So it kind of weighs her down. The head portrait, she looks a little bloated in the face. I gotta, I gotta say, it doesn't perfectly capture the actress. And again, when that happens in correspondence with what I think about with Supergirl, it doesn't really do much for me, to be honest with you. This one is just okay in terms of the sculpt. In terms of the articulation, though... You can do all the specific Supergirl poses, especially with the ab crunch, the arms, the butterfly joints. You can get her going all the way out with her arms. That's not too shabby. So for those of you that want to put her in the flight stand, which she does come with, she's able to zoom around, zip around, and do all those great things. Bicep, double jointed, the wrists. Again, nothing crazy, nothing new in terms of the articulation. All of it's updated. All of it looks great in terms of what McFarlane offers. You got the feet, the toes, you get the idea. But again, where this figure really shines is in the articulation to make her fly because overall the paint, the big diaper piece, the big clawed hopper of a cape. I mean, the thing is huge. For me, in recommending this, I would say it's a total pass unless you're a big fan of this movie and or this Supergirl. And then to go back to the Flash. So again, much like we saw with the prior Flash, now we're getting some speed effects that we have seen before. This is, <laughs> this is, I'm assuming Barry Allen, one of the Barry Allens maybe, wearing a Batman suit that's spray painted to have a Flash costume insignia and all that jazz, right? They cut off the ears. This kind of looks like, no joke, when you want to cosplay and it's like your first time doing it and this is what you come up with, right? You're like, hey, I look like the Flash, don't I? And this is, it just makes me laugh to be honest with you. As far as the figure, the paint, the overall look, I need to see more context for the movie. Maybe to look a whole lot better. The movie may have changed my whole mindset on this thing. I just think it looks goofy and ridiculous. But then that's not McFarlane Toys' fault. They've captured what they're showing in the movie. Although, I think that they've actually nailed what it would look like for that headpiece and everything else to look like that with the face in there. So I'm not going to fault them on that. But it doesn't look the best. We'll just say... The gloves, they look okay. He doesn't come with extra hands to really incorporate the whole running pose. You know what I mean? You got all the speed force effects. He does have a good ab crunch. And I like how they have situated the rubber diaper this time around. It doesn't go over the abs. It goes under, which conforms to the belt thing he has going on. So I kind of like that better. So overall, the figure in terms of its movement, articulation, and paint is not so bad. The head sculpt portrait, the way it looks... Is very goofy. He's got peg holes. He's got the feet. So it's kind of weird in the feet right there. It's got that little flap. He's got the toe articulation. So again, this one is kind of kind of match up with what I think about with the Supergirl figure. While it's not my ideal look for the character in any way, shape, or form, I'm assuming again this is very much specific to this movie. We'll get a lot more context, a lot more story behind it. For the figure itself, putting him into a running pose, attaching all the speed force effects. It's really not a bad figure, but at the same time, it's really not all that great. But I'll tell you what is uh, actually a pretty cool figure, right? So again, we're going with the Batman. So this Michael Keaton Target exclusive gold label, keep that in mind, comes with fisted hands. And he comes with the gas grapnel gun. And he comes with a Batarang. Both are cast in silver. Maybe they're silver this time around. Who knows? I gotta wait for the movie. The gas grapnel gun is okay, but undersized. But the Michael Keaton unmasked Batman. It looks like Michael Keaton when you kind of rotate it in certain lights. Now, it's kind of weird, again, to see Michael Keaton with... 
I would say gray hair, but it kind of looks like a blondish gray. You know what I mean? It's not a bad thing. It brings back the nostalgia of having Michael Keaton as Batman. I don't mind it. It's not fantastic. It's kind of weird that they didn't include an extra mask or something for him to hold. If you look at the boots right here, it kind of has a green wash to it, as we'll see with the other Batman coming up. He has that as well. Maybe that's something from the movie. Maybe it's just supposed to be dirt. But if the camera's not picking up, it's more of like a heavy green painted wash, which is odd. But again, it's Batman 89. For the most part, he doesn't have the yellow belt. He's got a really awesome, huge cloth cape to him, which really adds to the fun. So I'm assuming, and based on the trailers again, maybe you'll see him unmask when he's first unveiled, something like that. So it kind of mimics this scene. You get a nice amount of head rotation out of him. The rotation and the articulation on this and the shoulders and everything else along the entire figure is pretty stellar. I'm very happy with the way that these Batman, quote unquote, 89 figures came out. Again, hits the nostalgia. It's a great figure. They pose well. The belts, yes, if it was yellow, that would be amazing, but it doesn't match the film. They're going for the film accuracy, not our fan accuracy, right? And I'm assuming later down the road, if they have this mold, why not release one with the yellow belt, right? I would not put it past them at this point. But overall, while it's kind of wonky, right? Not to have an extra, we'll say a mask. Maybe you can hold a mask. It may not be part of the movie, but it sure would have elevated this figure a little bit. And next, we're going to talk about perhaps the big bad of this film. Perhaps it's not just General Zod and that whole rehash kind of thing. We have Dark Flash. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what I'm looking at here. It looks like a mishigash of CGI and DC Comics nonsense. This figure, <laughs> again, looks like a mud monster. Maybe he's Clayface, right? All these spiny parts that are sticking out will break off if you do not take care of this figure. There's nothing gummy about them. They are rigid plastic, and they will go south real quick, just FYI. Until you come to the shoulder pads of here with all the spikes, those are rubber. You'll have no problems there. The paint on this thing... I don't know. I mean, it look, kind of looks like I painted it, to be honest with you. I'm not very good at painting, which a lot of you say, I like, oh, just paint your figures. No, it's not that easy, okay? I'm not good at it. But the head sculpt, perhaps an extra head portrait would have been great. Hands, something like that. Maybe some speed force, something to kind of give a little bit more context to this figure. I know, we'll see the movie. We'll get all the context we want when we see it. Maybe it'll elevate this figure a little bit. Maybe like, oh man, that was so cool. I have to have this. But as of now, prior to seeing the film, I don't know what this is. I'm assuming it's one of the flashes. Maybe it's just the dark flash. Maybe it's an alternate apocalypse. Something happens. He gets merged with cyborg flesh. I don't know. It kind of looks like that. Like, he gets covered in metal or something like that. That's what it kind of looks like. Or tree bark. One of those. Maybe it's like a tree bark people, right? It's got that fungus thing. That <laughs> That'll be original for DC Comics. The articulation is fine on this guy for what he is. I mean, again, he's a monster thing, whatever it is. Maybe he starts running. Extra hands would have been great to put him in the whole running positions because I'm assuming as you're calling him Dark Flash, he'll be running after you maybe at some point. This is a real mishigash of a figure. This is not one that I'm going to recommend until you really see the movie and know what this is all about because it's blasé. And then... You have the one. The one that uh, I wanted most of all out of all these figures. And uh, I finally got him. So I'm totally stoked. As with the unmasked Michael Keaton Batman, this one will have the same exact accessories. So you got the same hands. You got the same accessories in terms of the Brat Grapnel and the Batarang. So that's solid. You get extras. And this is pretty fun to have, I will say. There are some wonkiness in the ears, but for the most part... It's really fun to have a Michael Keaton Batman again. Plus, he's got the cloth cape, which just resounds in the whole Kennerness of it all, right? Very cool. Again, not really stoked on how they did the rounded off ears, perhaps so children don't hurt themselves on it, is which I'm assuming, because kind of looks like he has like alien antenna, you know what I mean? But the other thing is he's got side eye. <laughs> 
You couldn't get away from it on this one. It's it's noticeable and it's not at the same time. It's not something I'm going to you know, complain too much about. The articulation is solid just again, like the Michael Keaton Unmasked. Very cool. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, fisted hands you can swap out with the open weapon holding hands. You got the big cape, huge heavy cape, which is awesome. Allows him to sit in a vehicle, right? And that's coming up. You get some nice articulation in the head. Although, as we know, he can't really turn his head like that in the costume. Perhaps now, in all his years of wisdom later down the road, he's fixed that. He's got the same kind of green, dark wash on the boots. It's really fun. I, I really like this figure a lot. It's hands down, as you can probably tell. It's my favorite figure out of this wave because of just all the fun things that you can do with this. But like all good Batmans, well, they need a good batmobile and i would tell you that except for there's a big glaring problem right in the middle canopy area and no this is not altered this isn't changed this is taking photos and video and it's very noticeable that the canopy is gray however we'll get to that in just a second because the tires are great the big exhaust ports and all the machinery and all the different details there is a lot of awesome things with this Batmobile. Number one being the price, right? The fact that they released it for that much money. But as good as it looks, it's very much the old Kenner Batmobile, both in its weight, its feel, right? It doesn't feel cheap. It's still very heavy, but it has that toy quality aspect to it. And that's not a bad thing. But the bad thing being that the canopy is great and I don't know what happened there so I'm gonna tell you unless you could just put that to the side and go like sure why not no I wouldn't get this Batmobile because until they have the black canopy that's all I can really tell you the back side of the Batmobile has all the red lights I think some fire plug-in kind of effect would have been awesome I think they really should have put that in there that would have just made it have a little bit more oomph right in displayable options but again it all comes back to that gray canopy. But it's wonky, right? You got this button at the front right here, which you just simply push, and that will jettison the canopy, to which then you can unlock it and open it up. You go inside the cockpit. It's a single-seater. Maybe it's a single-seater now. It's always a double-seater, right? Before the whole Batman Returns thing. The steering wheel does not rotate, but it does have paint for days. I'm actually impressed to see the amount of paint they included for all the inside parts. Thumbs up. They did a great job there. In talking about the Batmobile, you have to fix the big wings on the back, right? Which is not a problem. They just simply install easy peasy. Again, it's very light. It has that toyetic Kenner feel to it. The wheels will rotate on the bottom. Again, very much Kenner. It just has a bat symbol and then all the different line work that simulate parts of a car. And yes, for those of you wondering, Batman does fit beautifully inside his massive Batmobile, which... That's awesome, right? You get all that cool stuff uh, going on. Yes, the canopy is great. I still can't believe. After all this, after like so much hype, the canopy is great. But as you can see, yeah, Batman fits in there nicely. You may want to have to heat up the hands. They're very rigid to get him to hold the steering wheel. So keep that in mind or just keep a pair on the steering wheel, which is what I may end up doing. Now, in terms of the ears, you have to... Kind of, you, you figure it out. You got to kind of finagle it. You got to make it so that his ears fit beneath this part that overlaps right there. And that way you can close the canopy easy peasy. But the cool part is, again, aside from the wonky canopy, not to bring that up every single time, but it's something that really stands out. As you can see, the photos, the fun that you can have on your shelf is there. Especially if you have the old Mattel DC Multiverse Alfred he fits beautifully with this Batman, for lack of a better term, 89 Michael Keaton from McFarland Toys. I definitely like how they scale. You don't really think you'll win, do you? See, you can really have some fun with the photography there. Not only does Alfred fit, but I really think that the Penguin fits from the old Mattel DC Multiverse Signature Collection works as well. The height mixed with the Batmobile, mixed with some Alfred holding drinks and some Bat gadgets, that's stellar. So again, you kind of position Batman in front of that wonky canopy, 
You got the Batmobile going on. Yeah, mom's the word, right? Of course, wink, wink. But what's really cool is that all the Batmans that McFarlane has released thus far with Christian Bale. Now you got Michael Keaton in the Flash movie. And then you have Robert Pattinson. All these Batman figures look really cool together. And it really makes for a big Bat multiverse. Except for uh, Ben Affleck over here. You stay over there in the corner, Ben Affleck. I'm just going to say. But what's really cool, again, is all the villains from all the various Batman movies. Not intermingling in all the multiverses and such. But to have them in action figure form on your shelf. That is wild to see. So again, I'd like to see Jim Carrey now, Poison Ivy, Uma Thurman. I'd like to see Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze. You can really have some fun with toys on your shelf. It doesn't always make sense in the context of movies and story, but that's where you get to have fun is with toys. And speaking of which, all the Kenner Batmans that I've gotten over the years, it's really a lot of fun to add yet another Michael Keaton-ish Batman on your shelf from the pop out wings to the gold one <laughs> to the white arctic batman to the toy biz batman this is great this is a lot of fun again brings back all that nostalgic feels and of course that's what they're going with with this flash movie the flash has been replaced in this movie with batman 89 let's be honest everyone's going to see it for this very reason but in all honesty if you had to grab anything out of this new movie line the batmobile and this batman are definitely the standouts. So that is going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new McFarlane Toys The Flash action figure line. And thank you again to my friends over at McFarlane Toys for sending these all out for the purposes of this video. If you haven't seen the movie, so the context of the figures vary, but we're going off of just how the figures are made, the accessories, the looks, the sculpt, the paint. So as a whole, the line is a lot of Batmans and Flashes. And that gets kind of boring, to be honest with you. Yes, there's some good sculpts and such. Yes, there's a Supergirl amidst all these. But again, Batman and his Batmobile definitely reign supreme. So, you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything The Flash movie. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, fingers crossed, it's all we can hope for at this point, is that the movie is really good and unveils a brand new era for the DC multiverse. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.